From Chicago's Columbian Exposition to Paris's Exposition Universelle and Seattle's own Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition of 1909, architecture has played a major role in setting a tone of grandeur for World's Fairs. Seattle's 1962 World's Fair, titled Century 21, was no different. Hi, I'm Helen Diviak. And I'm Peter Nelson. And in today's Mohai Minute, we're going to learn about one of Seattle's most innovative architects, a visionary for the Century 21 Exposition, Paul Theory. In the late 1950s, organizers of the Century 21 Exposition wanted to represent Seattle to the rest of the world as a center of cosmopolitanism. A city of the future. To accomplish this task, they knew that they needed to find an architect to lead the design project who had a keen eye for modern aesthetics. So they hired Paul Theory, a man heralded for bringing architectural modernism to the Pacific Northwest. Born in Nome, Alaska, Theory was a Pacific Northwest native. He attended the University of Washington in the 1920s, trained abroad, and then returned to Seattle where he established himself as one of the city's premier architects, designing a number of private homes and residential complexes, like this one on Capitol Hill. When Paul Theory was hired by the World's Fair and Civic Center Commissions, he was already well known throughout the city of Seattle for a number of notable buildings, like the Fry Art Museum, and the building behind me, Mohai's original home nestled in the Montlake neighborhood. Opened on February 15, 1952, long before there was an I-5 highway or a 520 bridge, Mohai's original structure was indicative of Theory's approach to modern clean lines with a wink to traditional Pacific Northwest arts. But Theory's most famous work in Seattle is probably this building, what we know today as the Key Arena. During the fair, this Coliseum was celebrated for its innovative roof line. Inside, it housed the world of tomorrow, which included eye-opening exhibits and demonstrations like a peculiar elevator called the Bubbleator and a ceiling made of thousands of large suspended aluminum cubes. First floor, step off into the future, please. The future, please. The future, please. The future, please. Following the fair, and in accordance with Theory's intentions to sustain the fairgrounds as an active urban center for future generations, the Washington Coliseum was converted from an exhibit space into an arena where major music and sporting events would be held. Yeah, that's right. Since the close of the fair in October of 1962, this arena has been home to Seattle's championship basketball team, the Supersonics, and has hosted big name bands just like the Beatles, Radiohead, uh, Nirvana, Barack Obama. Well, he's not really a big name band. Yeah, but he's a, he's a big name and he spoke here. Yeah, but to the point being, Theory's vision of a center for active urban life has been fully realized in the Seattle center of today. Now, Paul Theory wasn't the only notable architect to work on the Seattle center. For example, Minoru Yamasaki, who designed New York's former Twin Towers, can be thanked for the Pacific Science Center. And John Graham, among others, can be thanked for the epic Space Needle. But it was Theory's vision and Theory's work to organize multiple engineers, architects, and contractors to build the fairgrounds that ultimately created the footprint for the Seattle Center that we enjoy today. <laughs> 